Before we get into today's show, let me tell you about HubSpot. If you're hustling in the trenches to build a business or bootstrapping one of your own, let's talk about an AI-powered tool that can lighten up your workload a bit. HubSpot's campaign assistant is a game changer for creating marketing campaigns at scale. It quickly turns your key selling points into a cohesive pitch, which helps you deliver knockout emails, ads, and landing pages in minutes. So let campaign assistant take care of the campaigns so you can get back to growing your business. Work smarter, not harder at HubSpot.com slash campaign dash assistant. Howdy, folks. It is Tuesday, June 13th. I'm Jacob Cohen here with Rob Litterst, and you are listening to The Hustle. Daily Show. Today, with more viewers watching TV with subtitles than probably ever, subtitle and closed captioning startups are open for business, and we will get into this. But before we do, here's what else is going on in the world of business and tech. Let's get crackalack. Okay, Rob, what have you been following? So the first thing I've been looking into is Reddit. Reddit is having a bit of a problem right now. And if you're in the tech space, you obviously know about Reddit. If you're like looking to build a digital community, you definitely know about Reddit. Reddit, one of the best kind of social platforms for building communities on the web. And many of its subreddits, which is what the communities are called on Reddit, have joined a two-day blackout in response to Reddit's latest policy on its API, which is essentially a pricing change that they push through. Have you heard anything about this? Well, this is a a virtual blackout, right? People are like literally not going on to the site for these days. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And I, I believe they're turning their communities private as well. So like you wouldn't even be able to see anything that's on the community. Okay. It's a strike. We got a Reddit strike. We have a Reddit strike, exactly. <laughs> Just joining the the writers in Hollywood, we've, we've got a strike going on right now. For a little bit of context, so Reddit has essentially allowed third-party apps to access its data for free for years through its API, but that's going to change in July. And CEO Steve Huffman basically said 90% of apps will still qualify for free usage of the API, but those that don't are going to have to pay 24 cents for every thousand data requests. That might not sound like a lot, but when you're building an app around Reddit, that can add up very quickly. Huffman said for a typical third-party app, it'll come out to about a dollar per user per month, but for some, it can be much, much more. And I think one of the examples that has gained the most attention and has gotten pretty crazy, the back and forth between the CEO and Reddit, is this app called Apollo, which is essentially an app to help navigate Reddit. Its CEO, Christian Selig, announced he'd have to shut the app down as the change would cost him $20 million per year. Damn. So pretty crazy. I don't know that there are that many apps that are going to fall into that category. Clearly, there are a few that are pretty bummed out about this. I mean, just look at the fact that a lot of these communities are, are doing this blackout. But I mean, it makes sense that Apollo would have such a big impact. It's literally built on top of Reddit. Right. So it's likely using its API quite a bit. Another concern of this that is pretty interesting is the impact on SEO. So many of these communities are huge drivers of traffic to other websites. If they go private, then other websites essentially can't really access those communities. So like the backlinking won't necessarily work. It's very, very interesting. I was talking to an SEO consultant earlier today about this, and he said it's definitely going to have a big ripple effect, at least for the next few days. And they're saying the blackout could last a little bit longer. So stay tuned. This could just be the beginning. Stay tuned. You might Read more about it on the newsletter in the coming days. Exactly. All right. What about you, JC? What have you been looking into? Yeah, well, in other news, I was looking into DoorDash, which I guess you could call DoorCash right now because New York City bumped minimum wages for app food delivery workers to $17.96 an hour, an increase of around $13 an hour. Also, Grubhub, unfortunately, laid off 15% of its corporate workforce, around 400 employees. So a lot of news in that space. Also, Tamagotchi, you remember that little toy? Yes, of course I do. It's still around. And it's hopping on the Web3 train with the Tamaverse, a platform featuring multiplayer parties, customizable looks, and of course, brand ambassador Charlie D'Amelio, who, by the way, was not born when the original toy came out in 1997. That's crazy. (laughs) Yeah. Speaking of Web3, Cryptocurrency trading volume on Robinhood was down 68% year over year to $2.1 billion in May. Also, the FTC filed for an injunction to block Microsoft's proposed $68.7 billion acquisition of Activision Blizzard before the acquisition's 
July 18th deadline. And lastly, Twitter's new CEO, Linda Yaccarino, sent her first email to employees yesterday saying, Twitter's on a mission to become the world's most accurate real-time information source and global town square for communication. And with that, let's get to today's main stories. All right, JC. So I know we covered subtitle usage a few months back in the newsletter, but it sounds like it's continued to trend up. Can you tell me what's going on in the use of subtitles? Because my parents use subtitles for pretty much everything that they watch, (laughs) and I want to understand what is behind this trend. Well, it's not just your parents, so, you know, cut them some (laughs) slack, right? (laughs) All right. 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 It's really an interesting trend because more and more, you're seeing subtitles pop up basically everywhere across the web, across all kinds of content mediums, whether it's TV, movies, TikTok, YouTube, Instagram. There's just kind of this broad trend of slapping words on the screen. These subtitles are more prevalent than probably ever between 2017 and 2022, the number of Netflix users streaming with subtitles switched on more than doubled. And some interesting data across Roku's platform in 2022, 58% of subscribers were using subtitles that includes two thirds of the company's millennial customers. And I don't know, just something about the words on the screen has struck a chord with consumers and it's really paving the way for this golden age of video accessibility. So you're telling me I'm in the minority now for not using subtitles. You are in the minority. (laughs) I'm a millennial, so I'm in the one-thirds of millennial customers. That is wild. Here's what's interesting about that. For Roku's customers, around one-third of subtitle users have diagnosed hearing impairments. Okay. So that makes sense, right? Obviously. Another third, according to an interesting piece in The Atlantic, uses subtitles situationally. If they have a kid sleeping near the room with the TV, something like that. Or if it's like Peaky Blinders and you literally can't understand a word they're saying, (laughs) something like that. That, exactly. Or yeah, it's a battle against mumbling actors, right? (laughs) Right. But the last third, they just do it out of habit. It's just kind of this new habit that's been ingrained, I would argue, for many young people through TikTok that has captions basically turned on automatically, a big part of the experience on that platform. And just reading between the lines a bit, there are some big startups in the subtitle caption space that I was learning about that were pretty interesting and raised some big money. Companies like Verbit and Rev have raised $569 million and a little over $30 million, respectively, in recent years. Another startup, Ava, I believe it's called, which aims to help deaf and hard of hearing people basically live transcribe anything from a Zoom call to, on their website, they said, to gossiping at lunch, raised a little over $16 million. And they're taking on what they call a $20 billion real-time communication, access, and transcription marketing. So this is just a big space and showing no signs of slowing down. It is really funny how a lot of this does seem to come from the younger generation and TikTok and Instagram usage. I feel like every video that I've seen from either of those platforms recently has had captions. It's just become kind of table stakes for those videos. And I don't know if it's always been the case or if I'm just noticing it or what it is, but it, it really seems like every single video essentially has captions now. They've made it so mainstream. Uh, It's totally mainstream. And there's even these deeper trends to this, where if you go on TikTok, a very classic format on the app is where you have basically two videos playing at the same time. You have a top video, which is like the main content, and a split screen with a bottom video that's literally just a recording of a video game being played. Okay, I've seen this. (laughs) Yeah, and there's something about that format that just keeps people engaged, keeps people watching these videos for longer. And I was thinking about it, and it's not so different in some ways to having subtitles and captions on the screen. It gives you something else to look at, right. another way to interact with the stuff you're consuming. And I just thought that was very interesting. And you know, for that one third of Roku subscribers who use subtitles just out of habit, I think there's something there. Totally. It's pretty neat. And bada bing, bada boom, that's going to do it for us today. Thanks for tuning in to the Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Robert Hartwig. Our executive producer is Darren Clark. We've got a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter, which you can sign up for at thehustle.co slash email. Hope you have an awesome Tuesday. 
We'll catch you tomorrow. Let me tell you about a show that I've been loving lately. It's called Entrepreneurs on Fire. It's hosted by the incredible John Lee Dumas. It's available now on the HubSpot Podcast Network. Entrepreneurs on Fire stokes inspiration and shares strategies to fire up your entrepreneurial journey and create the life that you've always dreamed of. I'm a big fan of this podcast. It has energy, it has value, and it's all about learning about entrepreneurship. I was just listening to an episode the other day. JLD interviewed Jay Rogers, who was such a wealth of information. He kind of went into how entrepreneurship chooses you. You don't necessarily choose it. And that failure only happens when you stop trying to win. A lot of gems in this one. So I highly recommend checking out that particular episode along with the rest. So go listen to Entrepreneurs on Fire wherever you get your podcasts. Hey guys, if you listen to the Hustle Daily Show on Google Podcasts, we want to let you know that the option will no longer be available pretty soon. Google is sunsetting its podcast app sometime in early 2024 in favor of YouTube Music, and we want to give you a heads up before it's too late since that time's almost here. The Hustle Daily Show is available everywhere and anywhere that you listen to podcasts like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you're using YouTube Music, we are there as well. If you're an Android fan, there are plenty of apps like Overcast, Pocket Casts, Player FM, and more. So just search for us wherever you decide to listen to your favorite podcasts.